Fairy Godmother's wish line, Geraldine, grantor of wishes and dreams speaking. Oh, hello, Tom Thumb. Uh-huh, you got a wish? Sure, hit me with it. Oh, okay. Just let me repeat that back. You want me to transform your teacher, Miss Hypotenuse, into a wombat, right? Hmm. Sorry, Tom, it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, never mind. Yes, better luck next time. Mm. Okay, bye, Tom. Oh, very godmother's wish line, Geraldine, grantor of wishes and dreams speaking. Little Miss Muppet. Yes, nice to hear your voice. Uh-huh. Oh, you've got a wish, yep. Mm-hmm. Sick of eating curds and whey, huh? Yeah, don't blame you. Not very nice. Yeah. I just don't see how that's going to work, Miss Muffet. Like, think about it. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating a 180 gram bag of M&Ms. It's, yeah, it doesn't rhyme. Well, Kit Kat's not going to do it either. Um, I know. I've got an idea, how about this? Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating a Milky Way. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, I like Milky Ways too. Yeah, yeah, wish granted. Yeah, I'll send them right around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, send me trailer of them if you like. Uh-huh, yes, <laughs> thanks, I do like poetry, yes. Oh, what, at, at Rapunzel's? Tonight, a poetry slam. I might see you there. Thanks for the tip. See you, Miss Muffet. Enjoy your Milky Ways. Bye. Wow, a poetry slam at Rapunzel's. Oh, I'll have to practice up. What could I do? I've got a few here. Oh, no, not that one. No. Here's one. I might try this one. Itsy Bitsy Spider. Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the water spout. Not a drop of rain fell to flush the spider out. Made his way up to the roof, then launched himself from there, landing on the windowsill behind poor Miss LeClaire. Ellie watched the spider creep and crawl its way inside. And there, beyond the window in the schoolyard, smiling wide, was Tom, her friend. He winked and raised a small box in his hand, then used his thumbs to work controls and Itsy sprang to land. Plonking down upon the headrest of the teacher's chair, Itsy climbed her ponytail, a stairway made of hair. Reaching right inside the collar of the teacher's dress, he scrambled down her back and it did cause her much distress. She jumped about and waved her arms and screamed and wailed and cried. Everybody out, she screamed. Go on, get outside. Detention's done, so off you go. To home you all must race. And I shall call the pest man in to fumigate the place. Ellie didn't quibble. No, she leapt up from her chair, kept her face set serious to fool poor Miss LeClaire. But once outside, she high-fived Tom and they both rolled about. Then Tom set to the hardest job of getting Itsy out. Hmm, that might work. <coughs> Fairy Godmother's wish line, Geraldine, grantor of wishes and dreams speaking. Oh, it's the old woman who lives in a shoe. Hello. Uh-huh. How are you? Yeah, long time no see. Still out in Sanchi Valley? Yeah. Oh, it's so peaceful out there, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So what's your wish? A trailer load of horse manure. Uh-huh. And faster Wi-Fi. Completely reasonable wishes. I can't see why we wouldn't grab those. 
Sure. Yeah. Job done. Okay, then. Bye. Have a lovely day. Bye. The old woman who lived in a shoe? What a coincidence. I have a poem about her. Maybe it's a sign. I might practice it for tonight. Perform it at Rapunzel's. Yeah. The old woman who lived in a shoe. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She lived in a valley, way out of town, where often she found her internet down. But not only that, laptops were lean, one between six during school quarantine. What would they learn in this one tiny room, jostling to fiddle their faces on Zoom? The shoving, the noise, the fighting, the screaming. No data left to keep Netflix streaming. She went outside to the garden to dig and feed rotten veggies to Penny the pig. The ruckus it faded with each step she took down to the dwindling, trickling brook. She sat on the bank by the brook and she found a treasure that burst from the arid dry ground. She picked it and wished on the rare four-leaf clover. Oh, please, just let this pandemic be over. For I will go crazy stuck in this shoe. With so many children, what shall I do? I'd give them some broth without any bread, whip them all soundly, then send them to bed. But the 21st century doesn't look kindly on starving and whipping and beating kids blindly. Kids nowadays expect you to listen as they prattle on about carbon emission. Well, not in my day. We kids knew our place. To speak out of turn would cause a disgrace. She cast her thoughts back to her days as a child, exploring the rainforest, free and wild, catching frogs and butterflies too, spotting a bush rat or tree kangaroo, splashing in streams, the fun, the laughter, before the dozers made way for pasture. She looked to the sky and the sun that baked and longed for the past. Her heart, it ached. Her children were right to reason and rally, for trees to return to Sanshu Valley. And yes, they were right to question and quarrel. For her not to listen, wouldn't that be immoral? To bluster and bully, oh, what a mistake. To blow hot air when their future's at stake. The old woman sighed and swore to the clover, before my last day on earth is over, the pasture will sing once more a song of cicadas and catbirds and frogs that belong, with whipbirds and trees and cassowaries too, a rain-filled stream, a tree kangaroo. I'll start today and plant native trees to nurture the earth, the birds and the bees. For this pandemic, is it not a warning of wildlife displaced through global warming? The old woman nodded. She'd do all she could. She'd listen and learn and work for good. For ignorance grows, it thrives like a weed. The seeds all sown with arrogance and greed. The smartest of all is the one who listens, a valuable gift above any that glistens. The woman knew now she was not always right, and admitting to that was half the fight. A blind fool can see if she opens her eyes. With grace she'd restore and apologise to the earth and the trees and the wildlife too, but most of all to her kids in the shoe. Yeah, that might work. Oh, fairy godmother's wish line. Your wish is our command. Yes, this is Geraldine, grantor of wishes and dreams. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, Miss Hypotenuse, you've got a wish to be turned into a wombat.
Tom Thumb, is that you again?